Uh, hello, everyone out there in the virtual world. Uh, my name is Jason Dake. I am the Deputy Director of Museum Programs and Learning here at the Denos Museum Center in Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, we are joined tonight by Russell Prather, who's going to be talking about his exhibition that is now on view here at the museum uh, through August 15th. And uh, first off, tell us where, where are you located? Because you're not in Michigan. I am in Santa Fe, New Mexico right now. I'm, uh, I'm at a friend's house and uh, he has very good Wi-Fi. Um, I actually am in New Mexico to do an artist residency at a small uh, town about an hour and a half away from here called Jemez Springs. It's just this, I've been there for a week. It's just this delightful town. Uh, the, the artist residency is with a outfit called Mission Street Arts and they've been really great. Um, and you're, so you're going from, uh, from a remote location to another one really, because you do, you do live up in the Upper Peninsula uh, full-time as a professor there at Northern Michigan. Tell us a little bit about how, you, how long have you been there and, and how did you get there? Um, I, well, very quickly, I was born in Canada in the Rocky Mountains. I went to school in, in Vancouver, BC. Uh, sometime in my early 20s, I found out that I was, in, I'm giving you the long story. It won't be that long though. Um, uh, I found out in my early 20s, I was a US as well as a Canadian citizen. So I, I decided to move down to the States and investigate. I ended up in Seattle. Um, and in Seattle, two significant things happened. I decided to go to graduate school and I met my uh, wife, Carol. And uh, we lived in Seattle for oh, over 10 years, maybe 12 years. Northern Michigan University in Marquette was interested. I went, I interviewed, they offered me the job. And so we moved there and we've been there uh, for Oh my God, Nine, 19 years, I think. Yeah, and, and before we take a look at, at the show here in the gallery, um, you know, have you always worked on, on or with these types of materials or were, were you working in other kinds of media um, that led to where you are now? Um, you know, I, I've always been making art. Early on, I didn't take what I was doing seriously, but it was interesting that I just kept doing it. It's something I kept gravitating to. So, you know, early on, I would kind of doodle and, and do just sort of ballpoint pen and pencil drawings. I started, I, I got a bunch of watercolor paints, I think, as a present. And so I started using those. And I, at the same time, I, I uh, discovered the work of Paul Clay, who does a lot of watercolors and a lot of overlaying of colors and sort of mixing colors. And uh, that's maybe the first sort of obvious way that I started layering things. But I think the more than anything I've done, what I'm doing now really, really traces back to the animated films that I was making in, um, my major was philosophy, but I, I was taking animation classes at the same time. And um, even though this, this was Canada, home of the, the National Film Board of Canada, which um, uh, supported a lot of animators doing amazing experimental animation. And I saw a lot of that stuff, but I gravitated toward just plain old cell animation, like what they used to make the Mickey Mouse cartoons or uh, the Bugs Bunny cartoons, which I was, I was particularly uh, crazy about Bugs Bunny as a kid. What's interesting is that those, what I was doing making cell animations is so similar, and I didn't really realize this until two or three years ago, is so similar to um, what I'm doing now. I mean, cell animation, you're basically taking these clear sheets of acetate and painting on them and layering them. And the reason you layer them is so that you can have different things going on in the background and in the middle ground and in the foreground. So you can, you know, you can swap out these transparent sheets and um, um, make a film frame by frame without having to like repaint everything every time. Anyway, so it's, it's 
sheets of acetate painted layered. And now what I'm doing, sheets of acrylic painted layered. They're just spaced out a little bit more so that you know, the cell animation, what, what you're shooting when you put those transparencies together is, is flat. And I've just sort of spaced mine out. And of course my things are, are more spatial than, well, my pieces aren't, aren't narrative like animated films are, but otherwise there's quite a similarity. Yeah. But, well, let's take a look through the gallery. Um, and so that that'll give people a little more of a visual reference to what you're referring to in terms of these layers and the sheets. And one aspect of these, right, is, is we think of them sort of as paintings, but they are very sculptural, right? So they're, they are something that you're meant to move around. And this one, you'll see a pretty dramatic change as we see this sort of birdcage form that doesn't really make itself too present when it's from the side, but it really, you pick up on it as you go through the, the end view. So talk with us about, about this one, Russell. Well, this is a, this has a bit of a history. So it, it, I had a show at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts, uh, uh, I think it was in 2016, sometime back then. And I made a piece and it, it, it's here, it, it, the cage part of it. I, I made the, the, uh, the, the cage without the, the, the white cloud shape. Um, and uh, maybe partly because the, the, the walls were black in that space, which worked really well for a lot of the pieces, the, the cage on itself, it was called perch and, and both, so it's a perch in the middle of the cage, which is obscured by the cloud now that you're seeing, and the doors are both open um, on either side of the cage. That's what people were supposed to see, but I didn't, I didn't really hung where it was. It just didn't really work. And I think it's because it just sort of got absorbed by the, the blackness of the walls. Um, but I still sort of found the piece interesting. And, and at some point, maybe oh, just a few months ago, um, because I've been working with the, the idea of doing these kind of layered clouds. And I thought, well, I think I'll just I'll just put a, a, a cloud in and around that cage. It seemed a little, um, I looked at a lot of Magritte, Rene Magritte paintings uh, when I was a young kid. The, the first art book I ever got was a Magritte book. And um, the cage cloud combination sort of reminds me of Magritte a little. It's a kind of, this, this piece seems very unlike my other pieces and it's maybe a little, Magritian uh, surrealism. I think you talked a little bit about this uh, when you were here installing and this idea of um, sort of capturing motion while at the same time being a uh, stationary object. And I don't, maybe it's not doing it from down here. I, I think I have to hold it up. So let me uh, hold it back up again. But I'm, I'm just noticing the way that the, the pink circles, if I can get my finger, there we go. Kind of, you know, even though this pink circle is in this sheet, it's being refracted through, yeah. you know, the series of sheets. So it actually almost looks like this, the bowl is moving in this direction, right? That it's <laughs> in a, at a great speed that it's sort of been frozen in time with this little trail, which again, I think is a nice cartoon reference too, right? The, this <laughs> idea of how do you show motion when you, you don't have a reference point? Well, you put lines behind it or you have a, an after image or, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to catch that as we're, we were talking about it. Oh, that, that's a great thing to point out. It's kind of a motion blur. I'm not sure I've ever quite thought about it that way, but I like thinking about it that way. Um, well, let's, uh, let's move into these floor pieces here and talk a little bit. And there's, there's several different approaches um, with this series here. The floor pieces came later. So I, I started doing the, the hanging pieces and that was very exciting. And I, and I kept uh, making them. And at a certain point, I just thought about what, you know, how I could 
sort of use this layering process, but in a in a different um, context. And and so what interested me, I think what made me want to do these floor pieces is just thinking about the difference between looking up at something. I mean, think you know the pieces are so much about your relationship to the thing you're looking at, right? You're moving around them, they're changing, you can't see them at certain points and then they appear if you look at them from an angle. So um, I was thinking more about how your experience and your way of thinking of a piece changes depending on where you are in relationship to it. And I was thinking specifically of, you know, looking up at something or looking down at something. I think for the the hanging pieces, and I was I was kind of alluding to this in talking about blimp. Uh, the hanging pieces seem more aspirational, you know, things in the in the sky. You know, I mean, for the religious, it's heaven. I mean, we tend to think of the sky as uh, and things above us as ethereal and and elusive. And it's quite the opposite with things that we look down on. And so I wanted to see what you know, what, how the experience would be different if you were looking at a layered thing and it was below you. I think we, when things are below us, we tend to feel more in control of them and to, to regard them more as sort of objects to be analyzed somehow. They're more earthly, they're more grounded, um, they're more present in a sense. So we'll, we'll move on to like the third sort of section of the of the works here in the gallery with the recto verso um well, this one here is slop bucket there we go <laughs> talking about uh perfection let's go to the slop bucket <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us a little bit about what what kind of this series where, where it came from russ okay um so this is very recent i started making these um Oh, within the last six months. Um, again, I was, I was, I mean, I think I'll still make hanging pieces, but I was getting, I, I don't know, that was feeling a little bit stale and I wanted to do something else. And so, um, and I was thinking about, I mean, here's a, a, a kind of obvious way that my work is influenced by literature in, um, in manuscript study, there's a term, you've heard of it, or a pair of terms, recto verso, which refers to two sides of a page. And so I call these recto verso paintings because I'm, I'm interested in this idea. I mean, in the history of painting, at, at some point, you know, somebody realized, I don't know, was it the abstract expressionist, Clement Greenberg, somebody, was like paintings are objects, you know, they're, they're canvas and paint has been applied and, and uh, um, people should be aware of it. They're, you know, I mean, a painting often, if it's representational, creates an illusion, but, um, you know, a lot of people at a certain point in the history of painting were like, but you shouldn't be deluded into thinking that it still isn't just a physical object. And, and that idea is, is kind of inspiring these pieces to a certain extent. They're very much paintings, but they're paintings that don't have a front and a back. They're just, I mean, it, the thing is every painting that's been made is a three-dimensional object, even though, you know, we, we have tended to just think of them as, as, as these flat surfaces with, with some sort of representational image on them. So, so these are really trying to impress upon people the fact that, that any painting is a physical object. I don't want to privilege a front or a back, which is why I use recto verso. Those, are, those terms just refer to one side and another side. So that's where the term comes from. Um, they're, I, I honestly can't say that they're pure paintings, but they're trying to move in that way. That is, and what I mean by pure painting is simply a painting that's only made out of paint. 
and it doesn't have you know stretcher bars and canvas or a panel or a frame or anything but um i have to disclose that it does have a support and that is a it's a very large piece of this polyester film that the other hanging pieces are are made of um the the paint is adhering to one of those sheets and the reason that uh, I had to use one of those sheets is because when I tried to do these just purely out of acrylic paint and then hang them, they just sag. And I really couldn't figure out how to aesthetically embrace the sagging phenomenon. I was still just thinking about these. I still wanted them to be like, you know, clear, rigid rectangles. So uh, I used this um, polyester film to just keep keep them uh hanging flat um and, and there are the the uh, plexiglass supports that they're hanging from i was curious maybe we can talk a little bit about since we were talking about the, the recto verso um the choice of not framing these particular pieces um uh, you know they not that the hanging ones are framed but they have a certain framing to them because of the rods, right? And then the floor pieces, of course, are literally in the frames. So, you know, think about it. Did you try framing them? Did you have a certain kind of way of thinking about that you didn't want to? I definitely didn't didn't want to. That That's part of the, the, the conception of them. I just wanted them to be uh, as purely just paintings as possible. And again, my, my I guess, I, I sort of aspire to finding a way to even getting rid of the, the um, polyester film support that's keeping them rigid right now and some, somehow finding some aesthetically pleasing way to just let the paint sag. Um, and again, that, yeah, that's just to, um, it's sort of just engaging with an issue in, in art history that sort of interests and amuses me, which is this, you know, this whole um, confrontation with the fact that, that even if a painting is, in, is an illusion, it's really just a thing. It's a, it's a body, it's, it's a physical thing. Uh, I sort of relate that, um, I mean, the pieces are run, going back to the frame thing, the pieces are unframed and unprotected. There's no glass on them. There, you know, there's nothing backing them up just to support them like a, 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 um, a wood panel or a, or a frame. And that makes them more vulnerable and more and I think gives them more an immediacy. And again, I even though this seems like very sort of you know formal artwork, I really relate that back to human bodies and the fact that human bodies are vulnerable. Mm -hmm.